Hello, how are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Are you ready for some optimization problems? Yes, I hope so. So we have Thrasymachus here, the rat-faced. And uh, he has a square sheet of cardboard with an area of 100 square inches. So of course, each side measures just 10 inches. And he wants to make an open top bo rectangular box by cutting identical squares from all four corners. So he's going to cut off these little squares here. right? And he's going to fold up along the dotted lines to form an open top box. So let me just draw this over here just so that to make sure that everyone understands exactly what's going on. I'm very visual and I feel that a lot of students are that way. You guys have to, to really see things to make sure you understand it. So let's say this little side here will correspond to this and I'll color code everything here. This little side over there will be here and let me just use a different color for the other one. Um, then this height here will essentially be this measure over there. So we're folding up this cardboard piece after taking out little squares from the corners to get an open top box. And okay, so the question is what is the measure of the sides of each square that needs to get cut uh, from the corners? So I'm going to call each one of these x. Okay? So so it follows that the little height that we have here, the little green side, will measure x. Fantastic. Now, what does the red side measure in terms of x? Is it 10? Is it 10? No. No, careful. The whole thing measures 10, but we're Taking off x, we're cutting it off, we're cutting this part out, we're cutting out this part as well. So we're going to subtract 2x from the 10. 1x and 2x. What about the blue side here? Same thing, we're going to cut out an x and an x, so it will be also 10 minus 2x. Okay? Now, what do we do? What is the volume of the box. Well, we can take length times width times height. So we're going to have 10 minus 2x times 10 minus 2x times x. And now I can actually just distribute this. And once we have everything distributed, simplified, what we will need to do is take the derivative of this and set it equal to 0 because we want to optimize for the volume. So 10 times 10, 100, minus 20x, minus 20x, plus 4x squared. And the x, there's another x here waiting, and that will get distributed. But first, I guess I'll just combine these two. So I get 100 minus 40x plus 40x squared times x. So once I distribute the x, I get 100x minus 40x squared plus 40, or sorry, 4x cubed. Great. So what do I need to do now? I need to take the derivative of this and set it equal to 0. Because we want to optimize this. So 100, so that's the derivative of 100x, just 100, minus the derivative of 40x squared will be 80x the derivative of 4x cubed will be 12x squared. I right? just need to bring down the 3, multiply by 4, and subtract 1 from the exponent. So we'll set that equal to 0. And now I will actually just divide both sides of the equation by 4. That makes it, make things simpler, right? Before we try to factor or solve this in whatever way you want. So 100... 100 divided by 4 is 25, 80 divided by 4 is 20, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. Great. So does this factor nicely? I, I think it does. 
let me just check it out. So I think it'll be three X and X. Um, so I can throw in a five over here, five over there. And look at that, that actually works out. That's, that's nice. Of course, we could have also used the quadratic formula. Nobody would uh, complain about that. Um, but factoring is a, a little bit quicker in this particular case. It's nice that it actually factors. Um, so x will need to be 5, right? Because we make x minus 5 equal to 0. Bring the 5 over, so x is 5 as well as 5 over 3. And why 5 over 3? Because we can go 3x minus 5 equals 0. So 3x equals 5, divide by 3, divide by 3, 5 over 3. Great, so we have two values for x. Which one do we choose to, to have as the answer? Well, if I choose the 5, let's think about this for a second. The whole thing here measures 10 inches. If we cut out squares that measure 5 by 5, <laughs> there will be no box at all. Right? The whole thing will be gone. So 5 we're going to just reject completely. But 5 over 3 will actually work out to be the answer. So that's 1 and 2 thirds of, uh, of an inch. And uh, so the measure of the sides of each square that, he, that needs to be cut from the corners will be just 1 and 2 thirds of an inch. And then we're going to maximize the, vo the volume of the box. That's it. But now, let's, let's say that your teacher is a bit picky and he also wants you to actually indeed prove that the volume will be maximized instead of minimized at that point. What do you need to do? Well, if that is the case, you want to test V prime and I can plug in, so let's say, actually I'll put V prime over up top there and the X down below and uh, one and two thirds over here. And I'll plug in values into V prime, uh, a value that is smaller than one and two thirds, so let's say one, and then a value that is greater than that, so let's say two. And I'll plug it into V prime right here, okay? If I plug in the one into V prime, I will be getting a positive value. And if I plug in 2 into V prime, I'll get a negative value. What does that mean? That means that the volume function is going up to the left of 1 and 2 thirds of x and then going down to the right because to the left the derivative is negative. So the slope is negative. And what does that mean? That means that we have a maximum. We have a maximum volume right here when x is 1 and 2 thirds of an inch. So that is the answer to our question. That's it.